Okay. Okay. Let's see. Don't you too. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'll see how I'm hard. It's very nice. You know this one? This one. Keep away from it. I've met mine for two months. Really? I've met mine, but we socially distanced. My father was protesting, but I told them I've got to stay back. They sit us and leave you. So, uh, the people of Kenya, with solemn commitment, we meet. We met at the Limuru Conference Center on the, for the fourth time to renew our commitment to the democratic transformation of our nation and to honor those who have preceded us in this endeavor. This occasion takes place against the backdrop of, a deeply, of deeply disturbing developments, the emasculation of parliament, harassment and intimidation of the judi judiciary, defiance of the courts, usurpation of, county government of, the, of the county government of Nairobi, militarization of civilian functions of the state that in some reveal a determination to restore the authoritarian political order of the one-party state that brave sons and daughters rose against on the fateful 7th day of July 1990, 30 years ago today. Cognizant that civil society, human rights and social justice movements we are today was born in the struggle for democracy, we are gathered here with a sense of both indignation and resolve. Indignation at the abuse of power, the self-aggrandizement, the unjust enrichment, the dishonesty, the betrayal of the trust that Kenyans have come to believe we had left behind. And we resolve that our dream of freedom, justice, and equality shall not be deferred. So we depart from this gathering with renewed vigor, determination to do our duty. Where the majority and minority parties are working in concert to completely remove the checks and balances envisaged by the Constitution, the minority party, in all practical purposes, has joined the government but still want to retain the privileges that come with the office. The oversight role of this people's institution has been corruptly and completely undermined. The Constitutional Commissions and Independent Offices under Chapter 15 of the Constitution which have been rendered completely useless through the appointment of persons with questionable backgrounds and qualifications. These institutions that were designed to protect the people of Kenya and the Constitution have become the purveyors, facilitators, and protectors of impunity and the undermining of the rule of law by acts of omission or even commission. Attempts to take control to take over and control the judiciary through the appointment or co-option of judicial officers, intimidation and hounding of perceived independent-minded officers, efforts to remove through character assassination trumped-up grounds for removal, including by sponsored motions and or fake charges. The worst form of this campaign against the judiciary is demonstrated by the rampant and deliberate disobedience of court orders by the state and or public officials, state departments and institutions. We are particularly concerned by the role of the National Intelligence Services becoming an instrument of the presidency in dealing with opponents of the president, including in undermining the judiciary. Co-option of opposition political parties through state lages and influence or demanding compliance through coercion using state institutions such as the Kenya Revenue Authority, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, the Director of Public Prosecutions, undermining the devolved system of government through administrative and legal impediments, through a systematic clawback of functions, withholding of requisite resources and refusal to respect the design of the devolved system of governance as provided for by the Constitution. The government of Kenya and its officials have entrenched mindset of disrespecting and violating human rights. Their culture of impunity against human rights is pervasive and if left unchecked will completely erode the integrity of the state. We can no longer tolerate continued violence by the police, enforced disappearances, 
extrajudicial killings, torture, gender-based violence, and other forms of violations of human rights. The current administration has even refused to honor court awards made in favor of those who suffered torture and illegal incarceration in the past. The most glaring historical injustice concerned land, and the current government is unwilling and is unable to address it due to self-interest. The main perpetrators and or beneficiaries of land crimes and illegalities sit and are represented at the highest levels of government. The service industry and the tourism sector is in confusion and a downturn that will take years to recover under the pandemic. The manufacturing industry is in dire straits due to the uninformed and confused policies. Lack of appreciation and protection of Kenyan workers, ignoring Kenya's interest in negotiating or implementing international trade agreements, lack of support and incentives for investors, poor service provision, including of water and electricity. We are also very concerned by the official return of deliberate marginalization of communities and regions in Kenya, akin to what was brought to bear on Kenyans under the negative impact of Secessional Paper Number no. 10 of 1965. The so-called policy, African socialism, and its application to economic planning. In particular, we abhor the deliberate destruction of coastal communities and residents and other Kenyans on the, Eastern, on the East African Northern Transport Corridor, from Mombasa to Malaba, by train system to a private farm in Naivasha, called Standard Gauge Railway, SGR. We consider the economic sabotage of Mombasa and surrounding counties by transferring port facilities and services to other places driven by hate and greed. And as a gross violation of human rights, and we will challenge it in Kenya and interna in international arena. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has dramatically demonstrated the folly of our false assumptions vis-a-vis -vis development and its harmful model that keeps the majority of our people in abject poverty without the bare minimum of necessities to have decent lives. A system that rewards a select few and, impoverish and impoverishes the majority of the people of Kenya. We are committed to overwhelmingly and overhauling this unjust economic system. Ensure a free and fair elections in 2022 and to banish election rigging from this land for good. We are sick and tired of illegal establishment of government through the rigging of elections in Kenya. We are setting out to ensure that we will have free, fair and credible election in 2022. Above all, we will oppose and resist any attempts to extend by subterfuge or other means the tenure of those who will be barred by the Constitution from seeking any further term, both at the national and the county levels. In particular, we will defeat any attempts to remove or alter term limits for holding office in the current Constitution or any attempt to create new offices for current office holders to return through the back door. It is time for those in office facing term limits to retire and go home quietly and leave Kenyans to pick the pieces. You've seen everybody else trying to, you know, get into this Uhuru thing of signing coalitions and all that, basically trying to fit us all into one rudderless ship. No one knows where it's going. And that's why we are saying that for Kenyans who mind the future, we must leave Raila, Uhuru, whatever they want to do, they can do it in their corner. But we must all come together and reshape the future of this country. That is the idea. So we'll contest the 22 election, 2022 elections on a social justice platform that encompasses the agenda that we have outlined. We are also hopeful that ongoing consultations with other political actors and Kenyans of goodwill will coalesce into a much broader national salvation platform. If there was ever a time to put aside our differences, personal, political, tribal, religious, ideological, social, the time is now. United, we will conquer. Divided, we will fall. God bless Kenya. Really important comment um, 
regarding our colleagues, our comrades, 56 as of the latest reports uh, of human rights defenders and others who are also uh, celebrating uh, Sabah Sabah today and were arrested for their demonstration brutally by the police and we ask for them to all be released. All, all our colleagues who have, been who have been arrested today to be released uh, unconditionally. Um, they are part of us and we are part of them. It's a multi-party system. It's not perfect. There's no, there's no perfect multi-party system. For me, the most alarming thing that we've seen under this particular administration has been the dramatic rollback of the freedoms which people who came before us uh, fought for the freedoms that we enjoy, including yourselves, you know, in media. Uh, you're all struggling now. We've been reading about the layoffs and other challenges and the political interference. Um, the past, since, since 2013, uh, the rollback of our rights and freedoms has been dramatic. Uh, the deepening of corruption. You know, I, had, I, I, I made my career fighting the corruption of the Moi era. The other day we buried Moi. You know, may he rest in peace. Um, but the corruption now is far worse than anything I have ever, ever witnessed or studied. And unless we stop it now, uh, Kenya is going back into a very dangerous space. And I think we must stand up and be ready to be counted and to unite with all other Kenyans of goodwill and all, all other formations working together, like our colleagues who are being arrested right now and are in the cells in, in Nairobi, for us to, to take our country back from a very small, very greedy and rapacious group. And that has been very consistent and very public. I support implementation of the Constitution, full implementation, not its cannibalization. Scenario trampling on the rights of citizens, mastering their voice, emasculating the critical institutions to democracy, the same, same scenario. We have multi-party in terms of the constitution, our Bill of Rights protects us, but we are operating as though those things are dead. The same scenario. We've done it before, we can do it and must do it again. Any society and what we are celebrating are today uh, has always uh, taken the courage of a few. And the courage of those few who sometimes pay a heavy price, uh, as some of those who have gone to f before us, is what conscientizes the larger society. And once the larger society is conscientized, there is nothing that can stop an idea whose time has right. come. Okay. Thank you very thank you very much.
Tapi kudulumiwa Hatuta kitena mauaji Tuli angushe